Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. I uh, come from a family of seven boys, and I've seen that look on my mom's face very often. But um, I'm not too sure we did the, the uh, plant thing at all. I don't remember. I don't remember that. But I know that Mother's Day um, it's a wonderful opportunity to say thank you to uh, our mothers and the mothers in our congregation. And I know also that it uh, holds some pain for people because, uh, like me, you've lost your mom and uh, or maybe had a not the most ideal experience growing up. But we want to. Uh, say today that um, we're thankful for everyone here who is a mother and uh, without you we wouldn't be here so <laughs> but I uh, was trying to express something on Facebook and I just came up with this little thing I was going to put a picture of my mom up first but I just said um, I miss her if she is still here hug her somehow thank her love you mom so, Lord, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for the hearts that they've given to us, the, the, the work, the love, the care. And we pray your blessing on each and every one today. May today be a, uh, a rejoicing and a, and a thanksgiving for the love and care we've received from our mothers. Bless their lives in all the different ways. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Well, today is the fifth message in our series, Simplify, and uh, I just want to throw my two cents in regarding our 25th anniversary. It's a quarter year, quarter century. I mean, we, this is going to be an exciting time for us, and I've been so thankful to be part of it. Um, we're having our national director, Phil Strout, and his wife, Jan, come in. It's very, it's not ordinary for the national director of the Vineyard to go to, to an event like we're going to have, like a local celebration. It's usually large conferences or uh, area regional meetings. So if you can in any way make clear your calendar so you can be here for his conference on Saturday afternoon, uh, please do that. He, he has so much wisdom to share. And uh, he, every time I hear him speak, he, my soul is impacted by his, his knowledge, his wisdom, but his love and his heart for the church. And uh, Jan, we, we, I just went down to the barn last, uh, yesterday. We heard Jan share uh, some things on prayer. I'm sure she's going to have a part of this. And uh, she has a lot to, to give and impart to us as she speaks. So uh, come on out. And then Sunday, we're going to have a great time here in our service. Uh, Phil will speak. And then we're going to have a, a barbecue afterwards. And I want to thank everybody who's been part of this to organize. Um, so it's, it's going to be great. So as we've been talking about uh, Simplify, this is, uh, as I said, the fifth message. Uh, one of the things Marilyn and I are beginning to do is declutter our house. Anybody else been doing that at all? Like five, six, seven of us, okay. The older you are, the more you have to work at this. But um, we're more intentionally getting, getting rid of old appliances, uh, old clothes, old shoes, uh, old guitars, I thought I'd get a reaction from a few musicians with that one. But um, we're, we're just like clearing things out. And anything that we can't manage or anything in our home that really does not add value to our lives, uh, we're clearing out. Uh, someone said that decluttering is about making room for things that matter. Uh, one of the things we're learning, by the way, is that as you are decluttering your home and getting rid of things, you really need to stay off uh, AmazonPrime.com because for every like 15 things we get rid of, we get these boxes coming in the mail. Oh, we need to get a new one of those now that we threw out the old one. It kind of defeats the purpose, so be, beware of that. I was reading up on some uh, articles about decluttering. I was pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting how cluttered the advice is to declutter. 10 ways to declutter your home. 18 different five-minute decluttering tip, trips, tips. 12, 12, 12 challenge. Throw away 12 items, donate 12 items, relocate 12 items. 365 less things. Give away one item per day for a whole year. Now, if I think if we did that in our house, it'd be empty. But all these different strategies and ways, and I'm thinking to myself, 
can't you just give me one thing, one simple thing that could help us give, us, give us some direction on how to declutter? Well, the best advice that I've heard on how to declutter is more of an attitude toward decluttering. And maybe you've heard this. What you do if you want to declutter your home, you take an object and you look at it and you ask yourself the question, does this bring me, anybody know? Joy. Does this bring me joy? If it doesn't, ditch it or give it away. Now I want to talk today about attitudes that simplify, specifically as it relates to stress and anxiety. Stress and anxiety clutter our lives. A couple weeks ago, uh, Emily Nephus, uh, one of our assistant pastors, spoke on worry and brought some very good insight in how to uh, release worry in your life through your relationship with Jesus. But I was thinking, since stress and worry and anxiety clutter our lives in the society, society that we live, I think it's worth taking uh, talking about this some more, and I want to suggest to you some attitudes, a couple attitudes that might help you declutter your life from stress and anxiety. Now, stress and anxiety are two different things. They're not the same thing. Stressful circumstances are the cause in life that bring the effects of anxiety. You have a stressful circumstance, and it could be anything. It could be everything. And that gives release within you to anxiety. Because life is stressful, that fallout of those stressful events becomes anxiety. And there are physical and emotional and uh, mental and uh, uh, spiritual effects that the stressful circumstances in our lives bring into our lives. Anxiety is harmful. It's harmful to ourselves. And it's also harmful to, in, to the lives of people around us. Often that, what happens is we get stressed out, we get very anxious and worried, and who do we take it out on? The people around us that we love the most. So when we're stressed out and anxious, we not only get hurt, our bodies get hurt, our minds get hurt, our, our emotions and our spirit, but it can also help the people, hurt the people around us. Now the bad news is this. We will always have stressful circumstances in life. Jesus told us that. He said, in this world, you will have what? Trouble. How many like that promise of Jesus? You will have trouble. The good news is Jesus has overcome the world. And he's given to us the Holy Spirit, the helper, the one called alongside to, to help us and as it relates to uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can help us then to develop attitudes in our lives that, that grow over time and as we encounter stressful circumstances can declutter our lives from the fallout of anxiety and worry. We can't avoid stress, but I think we can lessen the effect of stress in our lives. So our lives are not cluttered by uh, stress-induced sickness and and broken relationships, uh, worry about our future, uh, the in inability to move forward. We're kind of frozen in place because we're worrying so much about uh, a certain situation and how it's going to turn out. And so we don't move forward and try to find solutions and resolve issues. And we have all this anxiety that just freezes us in place. When we declutter our lives from anxiety and worry, it makes room for things that matter. Not that what you're dealing with doesn't matter because I know the things that I tend to get anxious about, they're important things oftentimes. It's not saying that. But decluttering our lives from anxiety and, and worry, uh, fear, uh, makes room for things that matter. In other words, when I'm not worrying about me, I have more of a tendency to think about other people and what's going on in their lives, and maybe help and pray and do what I can to help them in their circumstances. So let's talk about attitudes that simplify. Uh, a classic passage of scripture, and one that Emily turned to, that focuses on what Jesus told us about worry and what to do, 
is found in Matthew 6. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew 6. I only want to point out one particular verse there. In this text, Jesus tells us not to worry about our lives. Now, don't you just love it when somebody says, well, don't worry. You're worried about something. Now, don't worry. It's easy for you to say. Well, here's Jesus. Do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. Don't worry about those things. Worry won't add a single hour to your life. So rather than worry, he's telling us to trust our Heavenly Father because he cares about us. He knows what we need already. And trust is really the foundational attitude that we build and grow in in our lives that helps us develop other attitudes that can declutter anxiety and stress from our lives. The verse I want to focus on is verse 34 of Matthew 6. Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of it. I guess I have to do that. I mean, sorry. Came in, I had to let it go. Okay, let me go back again. Therefore, do not... We once had a whole motor motorcycle group come in on our parking lot outside. I was like, oh my gosh. You go out and tell them to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, right. You go out. Okay, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough trouble of its own. What does that mean? Anybody ever thought about that? Each day has enough trouble... Well, one possible interpretation is this. We should live in the present. Okay, we should live in the present without care for tomorrow. Be current with the day that we're in and don't worry about what's coming tomorrow. Another possible interpretation is there is no need to add to the troubles each day brings. There's going to be troubles probably, and we're adding to it by worrying now about what those troubles might or might not be. Clutter. And, and this is talking about what Jesus has told us. You will have trouble in the world. Here he says, each day you will have trouble. Anybody encouraged? That's really encouraging, Jesus. Thank you so much. No, he's, he's letting us know because he knows. Each day you will have trouble, so don't complicate, complicate life by worrying and getting anxious. Now, how can we do that? How can we do that? We can when we remember our Father in heaven cares for us, and he will take care of us. That is, that's his promise to us. The Apostle Peter says this in 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Therefore, and this is in the context of a letter written to church that had all the kinds of issues we deal with, maybe not the electronic issues, but the issues that, we, that come up in life just by living. But they were also being persecuted, severely persecuted for their faith, which I'm not sure many of us are experiencing that, this at all. People in other countries are, but not here. But they're being severely persecuted. And so he says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. And then verse 7, casting all your anxiety on him. And that word casting means like tossing it out, intentionally going, here it is, Lord, you can have it. I don't want it. It's no good for me, whatever, however that song goes. But casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He cares for you. Now, I read an article that suggested keeping a journal of day-to-day -day activities to identify the sources of stress in our lives. And then once we begin to see how our days are, are navigating, we can then make a determination of how to handle those stress triggers, those stress factors, so we can avoid worry and anxiety that stress brings. Now, chances are, in this article, it said the stress factors that most people encounter are in the area of one of four things. 
a personal relationship. Now be thinking, okay, personal relationship. Do I get stressed out? Yeah. He's sitting right next to me. No, no, sorry. <laughs> or she. Money. A job situation. Very common one. Or some health concern. And the point being, it is very helpful to identify what you are up against when it comes to stress in your life. And so now I want to offer today, regardless of where that stress is coming from, that's bringing into your life anxiety and worry and complicating and cluttering your life up so that you, you can't get to the things that really matter because you're, 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 you're sidetracked and you're um, distracted by the things in your life that you're worrying about. So regardless of what that area is, your job, your relationship, money, or a health concern, I want to suggest some helpful ways to declutter life from eternal, internal, eternal, internal worry and anxiety through the attitudes we take when we face the stress. First, and these are like just two simple things. Simplify. Lighten up your attitude. Lighten up your attitude. Proverbs 12, 25 says, worry weighs us down, a cheerful word picks us up. The Harvard Business Review reported that 60 to 90 percent of medical office visits were made for stress-related symptoms. 60 to 90 percent of what people were coming in for that were physical were related to stress. It really helps us as we face stress factors in our life to just lighten up and relax. Why? Because a lot of the stress we face in life is self-imposed. It's self-imposed. We try to do too much. We, we set too many goals, and it's just unrealistic that we're ever going to be able to, to, to attain the goals that we set if there are too many. We set unreal, unrealistic expectations upon ourselves. We place far too much emphasis on our careers, and the result is stress. We face a stressful situation, and it triggers worry and anxiety. Now, we all face big picture stress factors. If you're going through a health problem in your life, that's a big picture. It can be a big picture stress factor. We, f we face big picture stress factors in our families. Sometimes uh, uh, someone in our family is, is living life in a dysfunctional way and it breaks our hearts. Big picture things. But you know what? The little stress factors that we have in our lives that we face add up. They can add up if we don't watch. And we encounter these every day. And there are certain stress factors that are just little ones that have tended to get me. I look back on my day and I say, wow. And I'm feeling it all over in my chest, my gut. We were, Marilyn and I, my wife, were in Chicago last week. Uh, we had a Puerto Rico partnership meeting and set a lot of goals for the next year. And... Uh, we had, we had a great time with these other pastors and leaders from the different parts of the country who, who are participating together to plant churches in Puerto Rico. And we were with uh, Rand and Amy Tucker, who passed through the vineyard in Hyde Park. I don't know if you know where Hyde Park in Chicago? It's the first time we've ever been there. It was, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. And uh, Rand asked me to speak on Saturday night. Uh, at their church, and we did a, a Holy Spirit night, which was really wonderful. We had an amazing time. And then I also spoke two services on Sunday morning. So our flight back was scheduled for 4.50. That's when the plane was going to leave. Hyde Park, I didn't find out until we got there, has two services. So I was a little, little worried that we were not going to be able to make it to the airport in time to get our flight, which for me, getting there early is like at least two hours sometimes two and a half hours, just to make sure everything is going smoothly and we're there, we're not going to miss our plane. So the service wasn't over until about 12.30. We didn't leave the building until about 12.45, 12.50, and they said, let's go out to lunch together. We're going to take you guys out to lunch. Okay, great, let's go. So we went to lunch together, and we weren't finished eating until after 3 o'clock. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's why I went, what? So in, externally, I was kind of playing it cool. You know that one? Yeah. Hey, this is great. Hey, give me some more of that rice. You sure? You know. But inside, I was like tightening up. And it sounds like you guys can relate to that. I can feel the anxiety building. I did not want to miss this flight because by that time, we just wanted to get home. There's no place like home, right? So I mentioned to Rand at the table, I said, I think we should think about leaving. And he said, well, we may hit some traffic today. It's a Sunday. But I think you know it's only about a half hour away, so we, should, we have plenty of time. So we got in their van, and we're, we're making pretty good time. And we come around a curve on the highway. There are wall-to-wall cars. Wall, and, and like just red lights all over the place. I said, this isn't good. I'm feeling the anxiety build up. And, and, and so the traffic, that traffic bottleneck lightens up. And so we're starting to move again. We came around another curve, and there's like this beautiful vista of Chicago skyline and uh, the, 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 the Lake Michigan, and it was like opal green water, beautiful, and a blue sky. And Rand said, well, I'll pull over and stop so we can get a photograph. No, just go. We'll be fine, you know. And so I took a, it came out blurry, a couple of concrete slabs, but anyway. And then he said as we're driving, so the airport, you know, don't worry, it's about 10 minutes down this highway. And as he said that, we came around another bend in the highway, and there's another backup of traffic. Cars are barely moving. And Rand says, well, you know, so I organized this kind of like turnout so we could send you guys off with thank you for coming, and everybody showed up. I said, yeah, half of Chicago showed up to be a motorcade for us. So, but then at that point, I began to realize I was kind of getting tight inside. And so as we started joking about it, I realized there's nothing we can do. You know, you know I, I, and I just literally, I just internally prayed a little prayer. And I said, Lord, would you take this anxiety away? It's just not fun. I don't feel good. And I actually felt myself lighting, lightening up. Philippians 4, 6 says this, do not be anxious about anything. Now, make a list someday, and whatever is on that list is part of anything that stresses you out. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You know, part of the answer to anxiety is praying. It doesn't have to be, oh, Lord in heaven, my gracious heavenly Father, I do beseech thee. No, just a little prayer. Help. Would you take this? You said you would. He said, I can cast it upon you, so I want to cast it upon you. Why? Because he cares about us. He cares about us not having physical damage and heart issues and blood pressure issues because we're anxious about some traffic. I know it's hard. If there's one thing in life that grates against me, Marilyn and I were driving in 202 coming home, and cars all around us, and somehow a, a a guy cut in front of us. She screamed, whoa! We thought we had it. And he just kind of weird. It drives me crazy. It's stressful. So anyway, I prayed in these circumstances. The knot left, and we finally entered the departure, into the departure lanes of the, the airport where you get out and take your luggage. And so as we pull in there, it's just back to back again. And Rand says, I, I've never seen the traffic this bad at the airport. And so I said a quiet prayer again, and Lord, I just, I'm not going to worry. You know, don't worry, be happy. We're going to be okay. I just felt something, if it was me or the, the Spirit of God, you're going to be okay. You're going to make your plane. And so I was cool with it. Um, and guess what? We made it to our kiosk and TSA pre-boarding, yay. Um, but you only get you, you don't have to take off your shoes. That's the only thing that brings you, right? But uh, we got to our gate, half hour to spare. Well, not quite a half hour because they boarded the plane a half hour in advance, and we got there probably 10 minutes before they started boarding, and we made it, barely. So when we got to our gate, I said to Marilyn, you know, I, I was really starting to get freaked out back there and worried and getting anxious, and I just kind of prayed about it, and it all went away, and I, it just it really helped. And she says, well, I was talking to one of the women just before we left the church, and she asked what time our flight left, and I told her, and she said, good luck, Rand always runs late. So I was glad I didn't talk to her beforehand because I would have started worrying a lot earlier. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety weighs down the heart. 
And we, we, we all know that. The drive to work for many people can be the most stressful part of your day and bring a lot of anxiety into your life. Even before you leave, you're anticipating problems and you're starting to get anxious already. Then we get to work and often that is stressful. It brings worry and anxiety. More people die from worry than from work. More people worry than work. <laughs> worried through, how many have had a day like that? You're just worried about everything. You're not getting anything done. It's not always your job per se, but it's some of the things about your job on any particular day. But there's more to life than work. Theologian and missionary E. Stanley Jones said, worry is the interest we pay on tomorrow's troubles. You know, our careers are not the most important thing in our lives. Worrying about it gets us nowhere. Focusing on, on nothing but your job is not healthy. It's not wise. We get so busy making a living that we don't really live. We don't have time to. We don't have time to make a life because we're so wrapped up in our job and worried about it. God intends for life to be enjoyed, not merely endured. So it's, it's important to, to just open ourselves to the Spirit of God, whom he has given us, and ask him to help us to lighten up. Help us to lighten up. It may not work in every situation, and I know how difficult it can be, but begin to practice that kind of attitude. Okay, here we are facing stress. I'm just going to give it to God and lighten up. Find ways to relax. Just develop an attitude of prayer. You know, help God. How do you lighten up your attitude? It starts with that attitude of trusting that God cares for you, and he cares about that circumstance that you're in. Cast your anxiety upon him because he cares about you. So here's my anxiety about the traffic, about my job, about not having a job, not liking a job, about this relationship I am, about this health scare I'm, I'm going through. Lord, I cast it upon you. Life is complicated enough, so, so simplify life by not worrying about what it's going to bring through prayer and an attitude of lightening up. Cast all our anxieties upon Jesus. Just go, ah. It takes practice. It takes help from the Holy Spirit. But I am really trying to do this more and more and more in my life. And it's helping. It's helping. Second point and last point is this. Lighten up your attitude. Find ways to laugh. How many here like to laugh? I love to laugh. I love to make people laugh. I love to have people make me laugh. I like to watch movies and TV shows that, that make me laugh. Humor is a great stress reliever. Proverbs 17, says, Be cheerful. Being cheerful keeps you healthy. It is a slow death to be gloomy all the time. There is not one person on this earth who doesn't have to deal with the tendency to be anxious about life and to be worried about what the day is going to hold, this day or tomorrow. And the ones among us who have learned to laugh and not sweat so much have less stress. I read about one guy where he knows his day at work is going to be filled with stress. So he tries to keep on top of it by lightening it up and laughing about it when he can. For instance, when someone says to him, hey, have a nice day. He responds, thanks, but I have other plans. <laughs> to laugh about it. Just like brush it off. I love to do that. It helps me to lighten up and laugh about potentially stressful circumstances. Uh, and that's not always, you know, letting go with a big horse laugh. <laughs> but sometimes you just can smile inside. You know the situations where something happens and you just go inside and go, hmm. It's not worth getting upset about. So I got a story here that is very, very current. So you know that we have our 25th anniversary coming up and we plan these t-shirts. 
that are going to be wonderful for everybody. Okay, so Sarah uh, Elmer, uh, she does graphics, and, and we, we said, Sarah, could you do the graphics for our t-shirts? And she did a great job. Um, I think Amos had a little part with it for the back and designed some things for the back and, and uh, logos and, you know, loving and connecting and serving for 25 years. And so we, can't, we couldn't wait for these to get back. Really, 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 really nice shirts. So uh, all the staff got a text from Sarah and she said, hey, the shirts are in. And she was modeling it. Hey, they look great. They look great. There you go. There you go. Thank you. All right. And there's a, a kind of a grayish one, too. They're really, really great. There you go. I won't show you the back for too long. So, thanks, Frank. So, she, text came out, I don't know, about an hour later. I get a phone call from Sarah. Hey, Bob, I got some bad news. It's not like somebody died or, you know, somebody's really sick, but I got looking at the shirts and I turned them around and there's a typo. Oh, so there's a typo. And um, <laughs> it's so funny. So they got one of the words wrong. And so what's it say? Well, instead of connecting, it says kind of sighting. <laughs> it wasn't her fault. That was coming next. She, so she says, I, immediately I thought, oh no, and she went and checked her file, and her file was correct. So somewhere in the process of getting it printed, somebody didn't proof it and kind of cited. So I, <laughs> for some reason, I just, oh, well, okay, well, that just means that these shirts are going to be worth a lot of money in the future because, like, a coin is misprinted, <laughs> and they're really valuable at some point. I told that to Marilyn, she goes, who's going to buy them? <laughs> so... So I said, well, can we, keep, can we keep them? And she says, do you want the broken ones? <laughs> I said, well, you know, we might be able to market a new vineyard strategy with small groups. Come to our small groups. They're kind of sighting. <laughs> You're going to leave filled with life and kind of sighting your small group experience. So anyway, so it's going to be a little delayed with uh, getting the shirts in, but uh, we'll have them available. They're, going to, they're pushing it. We're going to have them Wednesday. And uh, we don't know if we get to keep the old ones or not, but I don't know what they're going to do with them. Make kind of sighting car wash rags or something. I don't know. But, um, but you know, laughing about it. What else are you going to do? There's nothing we can do. Just, and, and sometimes I just immediately go into something like that. We were just cracking up on the phone about it. But, um, and sometimes it's harder, depending on what it is. This is a big deal. We were looking forward to these. It could have been a very stressful part of trying to process our 25th anniversary, but it is what it is. Those little stress factors can add up to a lot of anxiety. So finding ways to laugh will uncomplicate and simplify life. Laughter is healing. There are studies that have been done that have found laughter to be beneficial to patients in hospitals. Um, and you may have heard of some of those stories where they showed patients uh, movies. And I remember one of the movies was the, the, Grouch, the Grouch Brothers, the, the Marx Brothers, and it actually helped people to heal more quickly. Uh, laughter or smiling inside will help us handle things in life and uh, help us to have an, a, a lightened up attitude. In other words, lighten up and don't take everything so seriously. Don't take yourself so seriously. And when I say that, some of you out there are thinking, yeah, I really do take myself too seriously. I, I, and it makes me worry, and it makes me stressed out, and it makes me have this anxiety. Just to lighten up. Um, you can have the most organized, managed life, but still go through it stressed out because you just don't know how to ease up and relax. Sometimes the important things aren't the only important things. The important thing is to laugh. And, and, and as uh, spouses can help each other with this. Um, you can go to your work and help other people be that kind of a person by just like taking life a little uh, less seriously. To quote a cliche, the first rule of life is don't sweat the small stuff. The second rule of life is it's all small stuff when you compare it with eternity. From God's perspective, our problems are not big problems. 
He is a lot bigger than anything that we face. And we just need to trust him. And you may say, well, if you knew my problems, if you knew my problems, you would know I just can't lighten up. And you wouldn't be able to lighten up if you knew my problems. Well, I wouldn't have a problem with that because they're not my problems. They're your problems. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. And you feel that same way about my problems. Hey, I'm glad they're his problems and not mine. Be, be happy about that. What I'm saying is you could lighten up a bit, your problems won't be so big. If you can lighten up a bit, your problems won't be so big. Medical, medical research confirms this. There is a positive chemical change that happens when you laugh. They're called T cells. And I'm thinking, does that mean tickle, tickle cells? You know? But they, they release endorphins, which are natural painkillers. Uh, there are all kinds of positive benefits when we laugh. And again, I love to laugh. One of the reasons Marilyn and I, when we started dating, really liked each other is because we made each other laugh, and we still do today. Most of it's around not being able to hear each other talk because we are hard of hearing, but, um, what? Hey, yo! You know, sometimes it makes us laugh. Other times it doesn't, but I won't go there. It's another message on repentance. But I love finding, like, funny stories or... Uh, Sometimes you'll, you'll see on Facebook these funny photographs come up or little videos, uh, and it just cracks me up sometimes. Uh, and so I put together a brief, very brief uh, slide, slideshow video of things that made me laugh. <laughs> Don't you feel better? <laughs> I mean, whatever you brought in now, you just kind of like, there's an endorphins kick in. Um, the point is, Make sure we're, let's make sure we're opening ourselves to, to more laughter. However way you can figure that out. If there's a movie, an old movie you like that cracks you up, just a particularly hard time of life, just get it out and watch it. Hang around with people that make you laugh. Um, do something, because as you go through life, we're going to face trouble, we're going to face stressful situations. Life does not always run smooth. So, so let's try not to sweat it so much and, and laugh a little bit. Uh, anyone out there ever say, you know, someday we're going to look back on this and laugh? Well, why wait? Laugh now. <laughs> Just enjoy it now. Laugh about it now. Laughter lightens the load of anxiety. It simplifies our life by decluttering our days of potential anxiety and worry that stressful encounters bring. Uh, Dale Carnegie, it's a business statement, but it applies to what we're talking about. Dale Carnegie said this, people rarely succeed unless they have fun in what they are doing. It's hard to be successful unless you're having fun at what you're doing. So let's make sure we're having fun doing life together. And, and when we're by ourselves out there fighting the traffic, let's pray. Holy Spirit, I, I thank you for your power and the way that you communicate in our lives. The love of the Father is so tremendous. And so I pray for each and every one of us here today that we would practice in our lives your presence. That you are always with us and you love to show up in big ways when we uh, expect that and open ourselves to you're working in those kinds of ways. But I pray for each and every one of us, uh, Holy Spirit, that we would have a, a greater ability to make room for you in our lives so that these, these things that we face, and, and as, as Jesus, you said, it's going to be something we face every day. The trouble will come every day. But I pray for all of us that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, that you would be so real and powerful in our lives, that we would allow you to be that, that we would make room for that, so that instead of the anxiety and the, the worry, Lord, that we're in peace and we can smile inside or maybe sometimes just really laugh about situations that are tough. And as we worship now, um, I, I ask, Lord, that you would do something, begin to do something new inside of us that uh, we can break old habits of reacting to stress 
and build new habits of casting our anxiety upon you because you care for us. So Holy Spirit, would you come now in a real powerful way, in a present way, as we worship, as we say, Father, we love you, that there will be something that we can leave this day with, leave this building with, that makes a difference and, and brings a change to these kinds of things. I ask you in Jesus' name.